Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be solving questions of interview preparation marathon contest for recursion. So just to give you an overview, interview preparation marathon is a series of contests in which for every contest we have a topic. So basically you'll get practice of that particular topic. There will be five questions. So we have already had contest on logic building, array, strings and recursion and there are videos available as well you can see. Today we'll be solving questions around recursion and also you can participate in, in upcoming contests so you can see the schedule over here so let's get started with the recursion question so we'll be solving this particular problem the video for rest of the problems you can find on the youtube channel these two are already uploaded these will be uploaded very soon uh, so let's just get started with the first question so right now the contest has end ended so right now the contest has ended so the problem is there in practice section so we'll go there and solve the problem okay so first let's try and understand the problem statement and then we will see how to write the recursive code this particular problem is straightforward and it can be solved using loops as well but we will see how we'll be solving this using recursion and since this is the first problem it's one of the easiest problem and if you are clear with the concept of recursion you should be able to solve this pretty easily so let's see how we are going to do it so it says you are given a positive integer n your task is to make a recursive function and sum all the number until n reaches to 1 after performing the following two operations so we'll be given a positive integer n i have to make a recursive function that sums all the number until n as per the following condition so if n is even then n equal to n by 2 and if n is odd then n equal to 3 into n plus 1 okay so that is the problem statement repeat the above steps until n becomes 1 so the problem statement is this much only basically what we have to do is we have to take a number n and we have to keep on adding the number based on particular two situations so if n is odd we'll simply do n equal to n by 2 and we'll do the addition similarly based on odd condition we'll do this particular situation and we have to keep a recursive function that keeps on updating n and keeps on adding the updated n so a similar kind of question was there in logic building as well if you might have seen there we solve this using loop here we'll be solving using recursion and it is mentioned here that it is guaranteed that after performing the above two operation n will become one at some point okay and sum of all numbers can be large so print the answer with modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 we'll do that and also it is saying that what happens is that in real interviews the reason we are doing recursion over here is because we want to practice recursion so if you solve this particular problem using iteration so you might get you know the answer as accepted but the practice will not be happening we will solve this using recursion let's just quickly see the input output format and uh, the constraints input format the first line contains an integer t denoting the number of test cases for each test case an integer n is provided Output format, for each test case, print the output in the new line. The output is going to be, the colon means the output will be the sum, all numbers. The output will be the sum of all numbers until n reaches to 1, including 1. So at any point, if we get n equal to 1, we simply add 1. Okay, constraints, t will be from 1 to 10 to the power 2, which means 1 to 100. And n will be from 1 to 10 to the power 6. Time limit is 1 second. Let's see the example. So we have input here, this is the t, number of test cases, this is going to be my first n, this is going to be my second n, okay, and for this 4, the output is 7, for 5, the output is 36, the explanation is here, so we will first try and solve this question on our own, we'll first try and solve the test case, and when you are solving the test case, we will also try and see how to form a recursive relation out of this and how to write the code, okay, so let's just try and do that, we will see how 4, 5, is giving us 7 and 36 that will also give me the kind of recursive code that we have to write so make sure first you try and solve this problem and if you can't do it make sure you come back and see the video and even if you could do it make sure whatever you have done is correct and see the approach that we are trying okay let's just go ahead and try and solve this particular problem okay okay now let's try and solve this question we have put the conditions over here so initially my n let's say is 5 okay so for 5 what happens is that we add 5 plus since n is odd the answer will be 3 into n plus 1 so we'll add 3 into n plus 1 which is going to be 16 now the story is not over yet because n is not 1 yet so what i'll do is this is my latest n i'll check this is even so i'll add n by 2 which is 8 now this is my latest n okay so now what happens is that i'll add n by 2 again which is going to be 4 now this is my latest n now i'll update again we'll add 2 and now Again, this is my latest n and this is even. So I'll do it 2 by 2 and I get 1. 
So this eventually gives me 36. Okay. So now this is how we did it. Now what we would have done in case of loop is that we would have keep kept on updating our n, you know, in every loop. Now here what we have to do is we have to create a function and we have to keep calling that function. So one thing I know is that the base condition will be if n is equal to 1, we return 1. So this is my base condition. Okay, now let's see how the function is going to be. So initially, let's say I call the function. Let's say the function is fun sum. Okay, I call it from main and I gave the parameter 5. Now in this particular function, what happens is that for calculating what we did, we did 5, which was this particular n. 5 plus what we did, we updated our n. So now we do it fun sum 16. Okay. Now this will give me the sum of 16. Now I did this particular part. I added my n. Now whatsoever is going to be the output by updated n that will be taken care by fun sum. Now let's say I call fun sum again. What happens is that here n is 16. So we do 16 plus fun sum 8. Why? We do n by 2. Now what happens again? We have 8 plus fun sum 4. Okay, now we have 4 plus fun sum 2. Sorry, fun sum 2. Now we go further. So since we divide this 2, what will happen is that I'll write it here. Sorry, I didn't see the lack of space coming. Anyways, so now from here in we have fun sum 2. In 2 we'll have 2 plus fun sum 1. Now what will happen is that now let's say again here when we come fun sum 1 the n is 1 so it returns 1. Now what happens is that we know that if n is equal to 1 1 is returned. So now from here on 1 is returned to this particular function. So now as soon as it gets 1 it calculates so 2 plus 1 is calculated and it is returned to the calling function. Who was the calling function? This particular function. So now this returns 3 to this particular place. Okay, so now this particular thing gets value 3. Now 4 plus 3, 7 is calculated and it is returned to this particular place. Okay, so fun sum 4 gives me 7. Now we calculate 8 plus 7, 15 and we return to this particular place. So this value becomes 15. Okay, now we calculate 16 plus 15 which gives me 31 and I return to this particular place, 31. Now I calculate 5 plus 31, that is 36 and I return to main from where the function was called and 36 gets printed so this is how things happen now since you have done this particular thing it will be easy for you to write down the code okay and now i think you and you should understand you know that how things are happening if you see in case of recursion what we did is that we kept on dividing our problem into sub problems okay we kept on updating our n and we kept on updating our n till we got n equal to 1 and as soon as we got n equal to 1 we started returning the results we started giving back the results to the parent and whosoever was the parent gave it back to the obviously uh, its parent. So now this is how we calculated the complete thing. And that's why I said, you know, if you know the basic function of recursion, basic functioning of recursion, this problem will be easy for you to solve. Now you already have the base condition. You kind of have the recursive code that how, you know, you just here we didn't check that n equal to uh, odd or even, but we'll do, do that in the code. You have that. Now it's easy for you to write the code. You, you can visualize the whole thing. That's very necessary in recursion that you visualize the whole relation. Else the things become really confusing. So before you write this code, write any code, you know, make sure you do this particular part. As we see in further questions, we'll see how we first visualize the complete combinations that's possible and then we write the code anyways let's just go forward and try the try and write the pseudo code and then we'll write it in the language specific code so now let's try and write the code so let's say the function is int sum sequence it will have the parameter n okay we'll check if n is equal to equal to 1 return 1 okay if n is odd okay let's make it if n mod 2 equal to equal to 0 let's say if n is even you simply return n plus some sequence n by 2 okay else we simply return n plus some sequence 3 into n plus 1 okay 
this is how it is this is my code so and obviously we are going to put, put the modulo operator here we are going to use the modulus that was put there that since the value could be large so when we write down the code we'll use that particular thing but this is how the code is so as you can see it's a very pretty simple code uh, let's just go ahead and try and write the code and run it and see if we're getting the answer except okay so let's first see the java program so in this case you can see we have a main function over here we are taking the input we, are, we first take t as the input then what we do is that we run a loop we again take n as the input and then we call this particular function or you can call method sum sequence n over here now here we have the sum sequence method we have the parameter as n we check the base condition over here if n is equal to 1 return 1 else if it is 0 what we will do is we will do it n plus this is actually n by 2 this is how it is and modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 this is the modulo that we are using else we will simply return this so the code is pretty much simple make sure you dry run this code as well so we have done that particular thing now let's just go ahead and submit the code and see if this answer is getting accepted so as you can see we have run the code and our answer is accepted fine now let's try and solve this particular code in C++ so here we have the main function then we are taking the input over here we are running the number of test cases loop then we take n as the input we call this particular function here we have n equal to 1 return 1 this is the base condition that we saw similarly here we are checking if n is odd or even if it is even then we simply do some sequence n by 2 this is nothing but n by 2 mod so we have defined mod over here and else we will just do the 3 into n plus 1 thing so this is how it is if it is n is even this particular function gets called if it is odd this particular function gets called now let's just submit this code and see if we are getting the right answer okay so as you can see the code is accepted so make sure you dry run the code as well don't just see it dry run the code and it's really you know a drying run the recursive code is really really helpful so make sure you do that now let's just see how the c code was written so here we have the main function in which we are simply taking integer as the input we are running the loop till we have a uh, t times we are running the loop t times then we have n here we are taking n as the input we are calling this particular function in this function we have a base condition over here we check if n equal to 1 return if n is even then in that case we simply call n plus some sequence n by 2 and then we have the modulus operator else we simply call the odd condition so let's just submit this code and see if we are getting the right answer so as you can see the code is accepted make sure you write the code on your own as well as you try to dry run the code as well okay